Hi, and welcome to the Builders and Brickster series. Uh, today I'm joined by Pedro from Wallbox. We are here to chat about uh, data architecture, just having a conversation here. My name is Garen Staubley. I am a solution architecture team lead at Databricks. Been with Databricks for about four years, worked uh, as a software engineer and cloud architect for uh, several years prior here just to uh, kind of chat, figure out how, how Wallbox does things, how, how they use the lake house, the technology stack, and uh, Pedro, would you like to introduce yourself? Yes, <clears throat> I'm Pedro Artia. I'm working for Wallbox. I'm in Wallbox one year, and well, I'm been working in big data some years, and I can comment about Wallbox a little bit. Wallbox is a global company, and well, it's dedicated to changing the way the world uses energy in the electric vehicle car. And well, Wallbox creates smart charging systems that combine innovative technology to manage the communication between the, the vehicle and charger. From the data team, we are collecting all the telemetry and well, basically we manage all the metrics that are generated by many sensors in order to evaluate in real time if we, are, if we have issues and how we can solve some issues in, in the, in, for the final user. Cool. So, uh, Pedro, I'd love to know a little bit more about some of this data, how, how it's, how you use it at Wallbox. Like what is the, what does the end user see? How does this data come through to you all? And, uh, yeah, just kind of the, the over overview there. Okay. The telemetry basically comes from, from the chargers. The chargers are generating sensor values constantly in real time. We process around three gigabytes each hour, and this depends on, on the hour, but this number is increasing each, each week, 5% per, per week. And however, we, we are able to, to provide all processed telemetry in two minutes. From the, from the charger is generating this telemetry until the service engineering is reviewing the behavior of the chargers because the end user are, are calling this uh, service engineering team, so they are able to fix the problems in real time. Cool, okay, so, so the data is arriving, it's got a couple minutes latency from really when it, when it gets generated on the, on the sensors that are responsible for charging it to when it, it kind of arrives through your cloud architecture. I wanna understand more about the architecture holistically here. So, like you have these these sensors that are on the chargers, they generate data. Like how do they communicate with the cloud? And then where do, how does where does this data go in through? Like if you walk me through the architecture, the tech stack that's involved here, just to give kind of our audience a good picture here uh, of of how this works. Well, basically, we have six sixty thousand chargers that are sending events. So they are obviously on-premise, but they are sending these events to, to Kafka. Basically, we have a, um, some pieces in the middle, like MQTT, that are resending the, the events to, to Kafka, and basically is the entry point in, the, in our data leak. So in our side, in data, we are receiving this these events with one streaming job. Okay, so you you the sensors generate the data. They send it via, and you have sixty thousand chargers. They send that data via to Kafka directly via like an HTTPS REST endpoint or something similar. That that data ends up in Kafka, uh, and then you consume it on the streaming side. So like. Give me a kind of walk through how you actually start to to leverage this data because I we have it in kind of high velocity. The data is arriving in high velocity, three gigabytes per hour, increasing uh, you know five percent per week. That's a pretty significant amount. I mean that's twenty four hours in a day times three gigs, and then five percent per week. That's that's a significant amount of data volume per per year. So like once it's in that high motion state. Where does it go from there? So you, you ingest it streaming wise. Can you walk us through what that looks like and how schemas are handled, for example? Well, basically the, the schemas can evolve, but we have 
forward compatibility. So we can uh, interact with the schema registry and the way we are managing this is from backend people that are the, the producers. Basically, we need to be agreed before they are sending the messages because we need to, they need to serialize the messages. We need to deserialize the message. So we, we need to register this new schema and this new schema needs to be forward compatible with the rest. So once they add a new field, for example, we are able to get all the schemas from the schema registry and our Spark job is able to get all the schema from the schema registry and they can, depends on the version, they, they are using this, the proper schema. So once we, are, we have serialized all the schemas, we store all of them in, in raw layer. Okay. And Basically, so this... each job compute is using a, a cluster with four nodes. It's not, it's not a, a, a cluster with 10 nodes. It's a simple cluster with four nodes. Okay. So four node cluster is responsible for ingesting this data via Spark. Is this structured streaming reading from Kafka directly? Exactly, it's, it's, it's structured streaming. It's basically a Scala job. Uh, and we are using, well, the CCD to deploy the job cluster. And basically it's executing 24 hours. Got it, okay. So it's constantly running and the data is coming in at a pretty high velocity. So three gigs per hour, and you've got this cluster running up, running 24 hours a day. And it's about a two minute delay, correct? Between when the chargers generate the data to when they, when it arrives in Kafka. Is that right? Roughly? Once we, we store this event in, in raw, we have the following job that is reading in the structured streaming. Uh, and we are reading, uh, all, all the pending events that we, that are arriving to, to row to write the, the table in our consolidated layer in order to, to provide to our data analyst a table with this, this telemetry. So this telemetry is not only get data from row and store this data in consolidated because we enrich all the telemetry with another another tables because we have three lookup tables regarding the the sensor information trigger information that we are enriching the the telemetry with these values got it okay and what kind of tables are you using so the data is arriving via kafka in high motion like high velocity motion. And then where, and you, you mentioned raw tables, consolidated tables and telemetry tables or uh, lookup tables, sorry. How are these tables stored? Like what structure are you using to handle all of these changes? Basically, um, the data that is coming from Kafka is in Abro, but all the rest layers, uh, raw, consolidated layer and following layers are storing the, the files in Delta format. Because okay. we can optimize the, the the fields, and we can use C order to find uh, in a good performance the, the tables. So all all those lookup tables and the telemetry are are delta delta files. Got it. Okay. So so you have Avro format coming through. You have a schema that's agreed to to be forward compatible from the the, the engineering team who's responsible for the, the telemetry data generation and production. And then you, you have this Avro data in Kafka that's read using that schema registry data and that lands into S3 as a Delta Lake table format. Is that right? Exactly. So cool. And then you have an optimized command that runs in Z orders. So you can get the benefit of like high selectivity and reduce the amount of processing time for your downstream users. Exactly. Awesome. Help us understand like which different teams access it via what tools, 
how, what kind of processes they're using to do this dashboards, like just what are the, what are the users downstream, like applications, scientists, yeah. analysts, et cetera. We started using notebook because we, we, we were um, another size, <laughs> another, we, we had a uh, few people. But now all business units in the company want to read data and we are providing serverless to get data from Data Lake. This is um, a, a big benefit for us because we can control the cost. The serverless can stop uh, if you don't use it. So you can create one per each business unit and you can control who is using the the serverless and the size of, of the serverless. So for all the our stakeholders, basically we are providing this resource and well, we are providing uh, some technical uh, information about how data is partitioned in order to guarantee the, the queries are faster because, well, they are using SQL, another, I think is another big point because, well, there are many people that knows SQL and not all the people knows how to use Scala, for example. And if you provide this tool, they can query the, the, data, the data lake using this, this tool. So how does how does Databricks help in these in this scenario? Like, what's the benefit here? Well, before using Databricks, my company didn't know how big would be the problem using same technologies as we use it in the past, because data is increasing a lot. Data team wasn't there yet, but once data team was included in the company, we saw we can reach in a few years. 300 gigabytes each hour. It's, it's, it's very complex. All companies should have a plan to scale their data and Wallbox, in, and in Wallbox, the telemetry is being generated constantly and we want to reach 1 million targets in 2025. If you have an ambitious plan, you need an ambitious technology. So yes. also, uh, I would like to say that not all technologies are thinking about li lineage, Schema evolution, auto scaling resources, updates, Delta format has uh, a good improvements regarding this, this feature. Switching between streaming and batch processing. Uh, well, in other words, there are too many considerations to choose uh, a technology, and only if you have experience working with data, you are aware about all the advantages uh, you have if you choose the proper technology. So the data, database um, is supporting us from day zero to, to this point because they, they give us a lot of meetings with architecture support or issue support. And I think it's a good way to start with big data. Awesome. That's a really cool like sentiment, like the ambitious plan needs ambitious technology. I love that, that sentiment. And uh, one of the first times I've heard more meetings equals good things. But I think in this case, more meetings is, is, is helping, you know, helping Wallbox see that, that better timed value and kind of partnering along on the journey of, of making sure that your ambitious plan can be realized with kind of an ambitious partnership as well over, over the next few years while you scale up to those, that, those million charges and the 300 gigabytes plus per day or per hour of, uh, of, of data telemetry. So that's really cool to hear. Kind of to recap, uh, it sounds like Databricks SQL serverless option has been a really good boon for Wallbox to make sure that you have elastic access to, the users have elastic access to the data itself. The data layout and partitioning scheme is really important with like optimize and Z order, as well as kind of the partitioning setup so you can minimize how much data is actually processed, therefore uh, reducing the amount of cost and reducing the amount of time that people have to spend waiting for queries to complete. 
And then just the SQL access alone is is kind of helpful so that there's there doesn't have to be kind of software engineering effort going into a language like Scala or Python or R that users would traditionally use in like a Databricks notebook. Um, what what's next? Well, for sure we are going to provide more data products based on telemetry, but we are facing some f- new features from from Databricks because we are quite interested in, in include Unity Catalog because I think there are a lot of things that are around Unity Catalog that can can provide us uh, a good a good a good feature over our, our tables. For example, the primary keys. Awesome. So it sounds like the data governance layer with Unity Catalog is is definitely top of mind for what what the future holds at least in the in the shorter term thank you so much for taking the time to chat today pedro we really appreciate it and uh, this is another episode of the builders and brickster series mm-hmm.